Uh, but, 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 but if there was no when, intent, if there was no intent of favoritism there, why just speak to the members of parliament and not chiefs, for example? Because if you say you want to make every Ghanaian who is eligible to apply, why the MPs and not any other leader? I'm a member of parliament. I'm sure that if you want to give information at first and you speak to your colleagues, it doesn't mean that you are not considering all Ghanaians. No. I'm a member of parliament. We hold a meeting, a close, a close city meeting. Mm -hmm. And then I think somebody asked, hey, so what are you going to do to us? And I'm like, oh, okay. They are, they are considering. So I help them to uh, go online and do it, ask everybody to. That's what I said. But like I said, <laughs> If you are a soldier and there's a matter in the camp, you discuss in the camp. You don't go as well to go and discuss with you. It doesn't mean that you are not thinking of the fight. And of course, you are talking about chiefs and all that. That's a different matter. Mm. Okay. You know what I mean. All right. Um, so so, so how, how many people have applied again and uh, what's going to happen now? Um, in fact, uh, as of last three days, mm. there were, were close to 90,000. That was the report that I had from the security agencies that was doing the recruitment. But bear in mind that Parliament has approved a budget. So there is an intake <laughs> that the agencies will have to do. And I don't think it's going to go beyond maybe 12,000 or so. So all this 80,000 is up to the security intelligence agencies to use the eligibility criteria to be able to select who uh, qualifies to actually be admitted. Okay. And may right. I say again mm -hmm. that we don't have <laughs> political police, political soldier, political fire. Why do I say so? And I've always made this statement and asked them to come and speak to the which they have not done. Currently, as we speak, because of uh, uh, some problems that members of parliament had uh, some time ago, where people almost lost their lives, there was a general appeal to my, prede my, my predecessor to make an application to Ghana Police Service so that every member of parliament is assigned with a, a, a police uh, or a bodyguard. Yes, no. mm. So as we speak, there are about 100 and maybe about 100 MPs on the other side, minority, who have police bodyguards. Mm. My question is that, are they telling us that those bodyguards of theirs are NDC talks? Are you getting my point? Because mm. the MPs were given the opportunity to choose a particular police officer to be their <laughs> bodyguard. Well, Some cases okay. they allow the system mm. to choose for them. Okay. Now, are we telling Ghanaian that bodyguards who are with MPs are, are political bodyguards? So those with uh, NDCs are NDC police. Those with the MPP majority side are MPP police. But, but Mr. Kote, the, the, the reality is that we've, the we've, we've seen members of parliament brandish new recruits for, in the police service on Facebook to say, well, I got these people into the service. That's what people are talking about political policing. Obviously, the members of parliament who are MPP who are brandishing the people on Facebook that we got them into the service will not go and take NDC people into the service. They'll take people who are aligned to the MPP, not so. No, my, my, my brother, so today, mm -hmm. today are we saying that if you go to uh, the schools and people who are cooking for the children, that, is that to suggest that when they cook for the children, they give uh, NDC parents food? Or rather, they give NDC's parents food and they don't give NDC's, uh, 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 sorry, NDC's um, uh, uh, ward or children's well, food. And this, they don't this, give, it's, it's wrong. This, these are help. two different I, things. I eh? These are two different things. No, One, they are not two different things. No, a member of parliament says, I, Kojo Brace, I was able to secure ABCD people recruitment into the police service. I'm an MPP MP. Are you saying that as an MPP MP, I'll go and pick people who I know for sure that they are NDC people, and lobby for them to get into the service. I know that the member of parliament is supposed to take care of his or her constituents. Constituents. When it comes to my constituency, mm -hmm. it is open secret. You can check. People who get jobs through me don't go into it because they are MPP or they are NDC. They get jobs because they are constituents. You can check. Your, 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 your station is in my constituency. Go and do your check.
Well. They tell you. Mm. So don't let us do that because when an MP goes to lobby for something, mm. obviously that MP is going to use it as uh, his achievement. You know what I mean? And so MP is allowed to go and lobby for people to get uh, nursing training. They are allowed to lobby for people to get postings in schools. They are allowed to do all that because it's serving the community, the constituents who have reposed that confidence and trust in them. And so I don't think that you can base this particular issue and say that we are recruiting MPP police. But that's the question that nobody is giving me an answer. Uh, but but are, 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 that, aren't you worried that we are getting politicians like yourself get people into the security service or services, something that must be based on, on merit and not necessarily because I know Henry Corte. But when you say politicians like myself, how do you mean? I've, I've given you the premise that MPs are helping people to get into the police service, for example. You said and MPs. When you say politicians like myself, I think you're making it personal. I need you to explain to me. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. So let me change no, it. No, please. I need you to explain to no, me. No, no, no. Please no. trust and let's continue. So, no, no. Because I'm having a chat with you. I'm having a chat with you. That's why I used you. Sorry. I didn't mean that you are doing that. I'm just saying that if yeah. MPs, let's say if I'm an MP, MP like me, Kojo Brace, and I put people in the service, aren't we worried that as members of parliament, as politicians, we are taking people who we know into the police, into the security services, something that should be based purely on merit and not because of who okay. someone knows. Okay, good question, good question. So is it the case that when a politician takes somebody to recruitment, the person doesn't go through a security criteria, the person doesn't go through a recruitment process, they just wear the person a uniform? Is that the case? You tell me. No, you tell me. Do you, can you point a finger to one person who is wearing uniform without going, to trade, going mm. through training and that the person didn't go through eligibility criteria? That is the challenge we have here. Everybody who goes through and is recruited into the security services is a citizen of this country. It's a Ghanaian and goes through the eligibility criteria, trains and then passes out as a police officer, fire service, immigration, prisons, NACOP, name them. Mm. So how then do we turn around and say that we are putting, we are recruiting back into the system? When you go and bring somebody who, excuse my language, uh, has not finished school, how do you wear the person in uniform to go and become a police officer? It is simply not possible. Okay. It can't be possible. I mean, you and I know it can't be possible. Mm. That's mm. where we are coming from. So we should be careful when we are making these statements to politicize the situation. Now, brother, mm. uh, let's be very careful. I keep saying it. Where we are getting to and what we are doing as a country is dangerous for us. Okay. Let us stop politicizing secrets. It's dangerous. Mm. Mm.